started? Are there any members of the press who need a press release? Because I have them. Raise your hand. Who else? Let's go, Andrew. Anybody else? Going once? <coughs> okay. You all good? Good? Okay. Boss? Good morning, everyone. I'm Gail Bloor, Manhattan Borough President, and I'm here with several colleagues, including Margaret Chin, Ben Kalos, the most council members, and the wonderful public advocate, Jesus James. Everybody is wonderful. And also the chair of the board number eight, the board three, and a whole bunch of other members of the community board. And two, 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 all of the community boards are interested in this topic, and I'll be very specific as to why. A little less than two months ago, uh, Margaret Chin and others stood here together on these steps to introduce a bill to prevent another Remington House from ever happening again. That bill would require the administration to create a searchable public database of all deed restrictions placed on formerly city owned property, and it would require more public input when changes to deed restrictions are being considered. We know that those steps are necessary, they are absolutely necessary, but we believe that they are not enough. Let's review what happened with Rivington House. This is just a very quick summary. One, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, and the Law Department had key roles in the murky opaque process of lifting restrictions. We asked why, and I think others asked why. Deed restrictions on formerly city-owned buildings define how these properties can be used. They preserve the public's interest in having these buildings or lots serve particular purposes. Nonprofit health care, for instance, as in the case of Remington House, cultural use, as in the case of the site in Harlem owned by the Dan Theater of Harlem, as what I'm getting at is this. These are land use questions, but they weren't being handled like land use questions. The decision to lift deed restrictions was being managed by the wrong people at the wrong agencies in the wrong process. There's good news. Utilizing a 
proven, tried, and tested process that for decades has guided thousands of land use changes. By making deed restriction changes subject to ruler, we will introduce transparency and public input to an inconsistent process that has failed to protect and preserve significant community assets like Rivington House. Like many of you, I read the Department of Investigation's report. I'm troubled by what they found. And I believe that those responsible should be held accountable. In addition to this request to make deed restrictions subject to ruler, I will continue to push for a council hearing as soon as possible on our legislation to reform this murky deed restriction process. We cannot wait to act. We must do everything possible to ensure that what happened at Rivington House never happened again. And I wanted to thank my colleagues in City Council for their support and all the advocates of the Thank you. Next we go to hear from public advocate Tish James. She's not only the public advocate, but she also, like the borough president, has an appointment to the City Planning Commission. Yeah. I want to thank um, Grove President Gail Brewer and Councilman Martin Chin for bringing us together this morning. The events that, trans that transpired around the lifting of Rivington House deed restriction opened our eyes to a glaring problem in the way our city is treating our communities. When we initiate development in our neighborhoods, thought and planning goes into every aspect. The orderly planning of our city involves several layers of oversight. Yet, when changes are made, when deed restrictions are lifted, the same level of thought, planning, and oversight is not applied. But these changes have a massive impact on our community, our public amenities, and our resources. We appreciate the administration taking steps to improve this process, but we need real accountability. We need real transparency. Two weeks ago, I called for the City Council to have oversight on this process, and I am proud to stand here today with my colleagues and support the deed restrictions we add to the new process. This will ensure accountability, transparency, and an otherwise opaque system with real implications for our communities. And as part of approving any deed restriction modification, the administration must ensure that there will be no, no net loss of community services or facilities for the local community. This will ensure that our communities and the neighborhoods and their resources are protected. With property values and rents in New York City higher than ever, we must ensure that deed restrictions are only lifted a process that involves substantial, independent oversight, a process that protects and benefits local residents and it allows for the voices of community boards, local elected officials, not only to be heard, but to have a seat at the table. I thank my colleagues in government. Residents to have a public hearing and to vote on the matter, and for the city council to have a public hearing and vote on the matter, and to put the city planning commission where it should be on land use matters, where they too can vote on the matter in a public way where there is accountability and a chance for the public to have a role in every step of the process. Uh, the DOI report has lent credence to why this is necessary and why this should be done through the Uniform Land Use Review process. And uh, I hope that the City Planning Commission can issue this request as soon as possible so that uh, when we get to hear uh, le the legislation that was authored by uh, Borough President Brewer and Council Member Chin and that I'm also a co-sponsor of, that we can do it all together. So pass the legislation with transparency, move it over into the Euler process, get to the bottom of what happened at Rivington, 
and get it all taken care of and done with as soon as possible at a public oversight hearing of the governmental operations committee. Uh, look forward to getting this behind us, moving forward, and making sure that our communities have a role in this process. And I just want to thank public advocate Tish James for uh, joining us today and for her advocacy for communities. And uh, I will stall for just a little bit longer as uh, the Speaker uh, of the City Council joins us. Uh, she initially called for a hearing on Rivington and uh, we look forward to working with her and the entire City Council to uh, get these reforms. Uh, ultimately, this is a larger than uh, one community issue. This has affected uh, Community Board 2, it has affected Community Board 10, it has affected many community boards in Brooklyn with uh, the numbers of properties expanding. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce yeah, the uh, Dale Brewer will introduce. Thank you. We're, um, we're very delighted to have uh, the Speaker of the City Council with us today. As you know, this process is two step. The City Planning Commission would have to participate and need to have the charter change and then the City Council would in fact do the voting on the bill. So we're delighted to have but love to have Speaker Melissa Barker. I want to thank President. I want to thank my colleague Carter Chan, who's a public advocate. Uh, the Department of Investigations, I'm sure you've heard already a lot. The Department of Investigation recent report on 45 Rivington raised serious concerns about the removal of the deed restriction at Rivington House and shed light on the troubling lack of transparency and accountability that exists within the current process. Any decision to modify or lift a deed restriction in exchange for payment to the City of New York needs to include extremely close, careful, and conscientious review. But sadly, this is not how the decision to lift deed restrictions at Rivington House was made, as was indicated in the report. The outstanding questions the Council and the Borough President have surrounding the sale of deed modifications at both Rivington House and Dance Theater of Harlem make clear that we must implement a standard uniform process around the removal of deed restrictions. That's why today I support the call uh, that City Planning Commission use their charter mandated power to recommend that the modification or removal of deed restrictions on property once owned by the city be subject to the uniform land use review procedure. Once the CPC has done that, the council will move forward with a local law to require you to learn for these actions. Newark will ensure a full and fair discussion with consideration by the community board, borough president, and ultimately final action by the city council. This is a creative, transparent proposal that is consistent with the city charter's framing of the council's land use authority and that will enable the city council to permanently codify this needed change into law. The removal of the deed restrictions at Rivington House and Dance Theater Harlem uh, wasn't malicious, but it was inexcusably sloppy. There's simply no doubt that a public review process by the community board, the borough president, and the council could have changed the outcome at Rivington House and Dance Theater of Harlem, but although we cannot change the actions of the past year, we can enact measures to ensure nothing like this happens again. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. We'll take questions in a minute, but I think we know the community board. Oh, we want to know how about having our wonderful Rosie Medley Center and Rosie Medley Center for Community Development. my borough president, Gil Brewer, and my sister and colleague, uh, Councilwoman Barbara Chin, on this important issue. Um, the loss of this valuable community facility in the Lower East Side affects my district as well. And there's an invisible line that divides our district, but both our constituents used to utilize that building. Um, you know, going forward, this is a process that makes sense. It's a process that people will get notified of. There will be a hearing process, a clock will start, and different um, bodies of government will vote on it. So uh, this should be a process we utilize going forward. I am particularly interested in this because I have several community facilities in my district where they've tried to remove the deed restrictions. So thank you, Borough President, uh, Margaret Chin, and my speaker, public advocate, um, community Board 3 Chair for taking the lead on this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're just going to identify not only the Community Board members, but we want to identify ourselves. Can you lead Community Board 3? Thank you. Thank you, 
Charles Powell, Duty Boy 10. Samuel Miller, Canadian Board 5. Samuel Miller, Canadian Board 5. Charles Powell, Duty Boy 10. Samuel Miller, Canadian Board 5. A lot of support. We'd be glad to take questions from the press. Any questions? Question for the speaker. I mean, uh, the, the report cited what appears to be an unprecedented lack of cooperation from the administration with the DOI investigation. One of your colleagues has suggested that DOI file a lawsuit in order to compel the administration to comply. What are your thoughts on, on that aspect of the case? Look, it's, it's very clear what the authority of the DOI is, right? The Department of Investigation is to have full access to documents. So that, that is a concern. Uh, I'm not familiar with the call that you indicated from one of my colleagues, uh, but clearly access to the documents should not have been uh, made, any, you know, made difficult. It should have been freely made available. So that aspect of the report is also very troubling. Uh, question from the front. Yes. Madam Speaker, I think there was also a report that the council had held off on when do you plan to have this hearing? And are you holding off until all the procedures are completed, or is there any other reason that the hearing has been delayed? No, the Department of Investigation works on behalf of the city of New York. So the work that they engage in is a benefit to us as, as a legislative body. It's a benefit to the city. So the work that they've completed and they've done is important. Obviously, the lack of full access to documents is of concern. But we've seen clearly uh, some of the issues that have been reported. So we plan to still have a hearing in the fall. Uh, we're also still gathering our information. Uh, but again, the Department of Investigation's report is really vital. And it's vital to the work that we do as a legislative body, too. It goes to the board, it goes to the board president, and then comes to us. So there's a lot of transparency at 
light of day that you see in that process and information can be raised along the way. Um, so obviously any improvements to the existing process is great, but incorporating the Euler process in any, any sort of lifting or de-restriction is very helpful to bring more attention and light into the process. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Press, if anybody needs a copy of the release, I got them now. Otherwise, they're going out by email in the next hour.